drop a like and do share leave your comments and do not forget to subscribe for more videos hello students welcome to repeatable.com your online gateway to the world of invaluable knowledge now students let's talk about two very important point extremely important point rather they are quintessential without whose discussion the entire discussion of time value of money doesn't hold any water they are compounding and discounting they are compounding and discounting so as the name suggests compounding is a process in which we are trying to assess the future value of a particular cash flow against the current investment so let's start with our points the concept of compounding and discounting are of extreme importance in the study of time value of money these concepts enable the decision maker to make the cash flows comparable which is immense which is of immense importance so why is it so uh, since the last discussion we have been talking about that why time value of money is so important so time value of money helps us in asking for a compensation rate for parting away from our money and second from a corporate finance point of view the time value of money helps us into making the cash flows comparable so we also saw that the cash flows need to be compared because there is a time gap or there is a time differential usually there is a time differential between two cash flows between the two cash flows due to the reasons which we have already discussed and at the heart of the reasons at the heart of the discussion that laid our three pillars financing decisions one was the financing investment and the dividend decisions we saw that more often than not the cash flows are not matched against each other against the same time frame so a time difference or a time segregation is bound to be there but in order to make the cash flows comparable so when we are using the word comparable it means that we are trying to see whether the cash flows of tn against t zeros are matching up properly so once again i repeat students the t zero stands for the, the present value or the present scenario or the present cash flow while tn refers to the time factor after n number of years obviously when we are using the word after n number of years it means that with tn we are more concerned with the futuristic time frame so the cash flows across two time frames should be matched against each other should be comparable against it should compare against each other to see whether or not a particular decision is worth to be taken so when we are using the word comparability we just discussed that in your financing decision investment decision dividend decisions they are separated by more than one year hence a comparison has to be made between two time frame that is a t0 and a t and it is a present as well as the as well as the future now the question arises that why exactly this uh, time uh, different difference should be bridged why again they should be compared because many a times when we are taking a decision right now we are, we are trying to invest a particular invest into a particular financial security invest into a particular asset we have to see whether we have to see whether or not they are profitable for us going forward 5 years 6 years or n number of years in the future so whenever we are making an investment right now at t0 we wish to see that after 3 years 4 years or after n years what will be the future value of our investment which we are making today or at t0 against a given required rate of return i once again repeat students listen to me carefully the comparability is so very important because when we are making an investment at t0 it becomes very pertinent to be seen it becomes very important to be seen that when we are parting from our money at t0 or today against a return in the future that is a tn and tn may be 3 years 4 years 5 years on the line so what will be the future value of our investment what will be the future value of our investment decisions which we are making today if our investment is growing as per our own desired rate of return or the rs against interest rate we can call it by by any name we feel like but the idea is that we need to see that how exactly the or what exactly the future value of our investment should look like if we are willing to part away from our investment at today or at our t0 so this can be found out by the help of the compounding this can be found out by the help of the compounding so as the name suggests compounding is a process of ascertaining the future value of a cash flow using the concept of compound interest so students one thing is very sure what is compound interest i'm coming coming to it shortly but let's try and understand the fact that compounding is a process which helps us in ascertaining the future value of the cash flow which we are willing to part away from us at t0 or at today's today's time frame so at today's time frame whatever sacrifice we are making whatever parting or whatever deposits we are making for how long whatever when we are uh, keeping our cash away from us so how should the future value look like if the particular cash flow is increasing 
at the rate of our required rate of return or the interest after n number of years in the future. Now, the concept of compound interest. So, compound interest is the interest which is received on the original amount principle as well as on the interest received on the principle. So, compound interest, my dear students, is one of the most powerful tools in the world of finance and believe me that in the world of finance almost most of the decisions or most of the returns they are being compounded so the power of compound interest is, is such that every year if the compounding is being done in a disciplined manner without taking the money out by the end of the year whatever corpus we are making that that amount becomes simply huge so why is it so why is it so that that against compound interest we are getting so much of power the final amount which we get in our hand it swells up to such a such a huge amount as against a simple interest so in terms of compound interest, as the name suggests, that in, in compound interest, theoretically what happens is that we try to get an interest on the principal and then whatever interest has been earned, that second interest becomes our new principal upon which we get another interest which has been committed to us. I once again repeat, compound interest is an interest which is received on the original amount that is principal as well as on the interest received on the principal. So, in a very layman's term, in a very simple terms, under compound interest, the interest becomes our new principle. So, whatever principle we are having and when we are earning a return on the return in the terms of interest on the existing principle. So, again, that particular principle is being added, sorry, the particular interest is being added back to the principle, thereby making the existing principle more and then on that excess amount or that increased principal amount, we earn another return. So, we earn an interest upon the interest which we already earn on the principal. So, in simple terms, we say that under compound interest, the interest becomes our new principal. So, whatever return we have earned on the first place, in the, in the second part, when the interest is being calculated, the interest is being calculated on not only on the principal into isolation, but also the existing interest is being added to the principal and then the new interest is, is being com computed on the principal plus plus the already earned interest. This is not the case in simple interest. In simple interest, we do not earn an interest on the interest. It is simply PTR by 100. So, receipt of interest on the principal as well as on the interest earned makes compounding a very powerful tool as it enhances the value of the future cash flows TN committed at present T0 tremendously. Obviously, it goes without saying that when Every year we are earning an interest on the interest already earned. It means what we are getting an additional cash flow. We are getting additional cash flow provided the cash flows are not being disrupted in between by taking them out. If we are keeping the amount put into the investment without disturbing them or without taking them out, what happens is that whatever interest we are earning year after year, that existing principle becomes a part of a new principle and the new principle becomes the existing principle plus the new interest and then again when we shall be earning the interest that shall be earned on the existing p plus i so with the compounding by the end of the n number of years whether five years six years seven years down the line finally whatever corpus or whatever amount we are uh, uh, we are accumulating that becomes a huge amount that becomes a huge amount. So, under compounding, it is a rule of the thumb and it is quite easy to understand that with a higher I and with a higher N, I, st I stands for your interest rate and with a higher N, N suppose for, it stands for a number of years. So, if the I is high and if the and if the N is high, then obviously, then at the end of the larger N, we shall be getting a huge amount accumulated by way of the compounding. So, once again, compounding is a process in which the future value of the present cash flow is being calculated with the help of the concept of compound interest. Once again, students, compounding is a process. Compounding is a process to, uh, to ascertain the future value of the current cash flows after n number of years at i percent rate compounded annually. There, it has to be compounded. So, so merely uh, increasing the interest by the simple interest, the accumulation will not be high. So, the, the accumulation will be more. It should be a huge amount only when the interest is being reinvested as per the compounding interest and the amount is not being taken out from the corpus if it is being allowed to be in the corpus itself. Okay, students, in the successive slides, we shall be discussing more on some formula and some derivation of the formula for calculation of the future value through the process of compounding. Thank you, students.